In this video, my wife Emily is going to paint this cup of coffee that she painted for a friend of hers. And when she uh, painted this, she intended to paint it quickly and not spend a lot of time on it. And so she didn't want to polish it up too much. Um, I thought it came out very, very nice. And uh, before uh, she starts painting uh, the demonstration, um, I wanted to just quickly tell you we have two new colors in Geneva Fine Art, Thalo Blue and Cadmium Red, um, which we have uh, now begun to sell. And if you haven't been to GenevaFineArt.com, um, also check out all the reviews on our paint. We're getting fantastic reviews, almost all five stars, and you can read about what people are saying about our paint. So go check that out. And thank you so much uh, for watching, and without further ado, here's Emily painting the cup of coffee. So here's my penciling. Pretty simple. I wanted to keep it simple because I, want, I wanted to paint quickly and keep it pretty rough. First I started with the background. Always, always, always fill in the background first. I didn't paint the background as it appears in the photo. I, I wanted to do a very simple background. So as you can see the light is coming from the top left corner and so I painted in the shadow and then just filled in with some of the dark browns that that occur in the photo. Just mixing some of those some of those browns and I'm actually using one of Mark's old palettes that he had some leftover paint on <laughs> and just filling in some of the browns. I guess I wanted it to sort of just look like it's sitting on a table which the the cap cappuccino is sitting on a glass table, but I didn't think that would really look very well on the painted. It would just not really make much sense. So I wanted to do more of just a, I wanted the, the coffee to be the centerpiece. And so the background, I wanted to keep it really simple. But you ha it has to make sense to your, to your mind, to your eyes. So I, I made, you know, the lighter part on the upper left hand corner and then went to shadow in the right, bottom right hand corner. I want to mix in some of the reds. It's not too much red, but a little bit. And some of those grays. And it, it really didn't take me very long. And then do, do a little bit of blending down here, not too much. And now moving on to the coffee cup. I start with the shadows. Always, always start with the shadows, the darkest parts first. And I also am using a smaller brush than I used for the background portion. Start with the darkest shadows. And at first I thought, oh, I'm just going to fill in all the dark shadows everywhere on the coffee cup. But then I thought, no, I'm just going to focus on this little cookie, wafer of a cookie, and filling in the shadows here as well. Like I said, trying to keep it really simple. I think the entire painting took me about four hours to paint. And moving up here to the, to the ca cappuccino, and this line here, see this line? It starts dark, and then I painted it that pretty dark color all the way around. I, I painted it too far. I didn't check my colors as I should have. And that's a very common mistake. And I do it too. <laughs> so this, this color here, it, it does start dark, but then I brought that dark color too far down. It's actually not that dark, but I didn't realize it because I didn't check it. I just thought, oh, it comes on down. But it, it actually gets lighter in reality. So I painted that incorrectly. I don't think I ever go back and fix it either, but it turns out okay, I guess. And focusing on the cookie. So initially the cookie, I was going to paint it as you see it with the wafer lines and the shadows and I'm, I'm trying to do it without blending too much, just putting the co colors in as, they, as I see them. 
and then I get frustrated with a cookie and so I move back up to the coffee the coffee foam just filling in some of those nice browns those rich browns moving to the lighter lighter steps I guess those are more middle steps and I want to make sure I have some transition colors in from the dark to the light so Mark is always reminding me and his also his students don't blend so don't paint a dark and then a light and then just blend in between you need that transition color you need the transitions or it just doesn't look quite right so you have the dark the transition and then to the to the lighter color and I, and I did I thought I did okay not blending too much just overall on this painting so here I, I should have check my colors and because that even that dark color doesn't come down as far as I painted it but I, I'm not I can't remember I don't think I ever go back and fix it so now I notice that some of the colors need I need to tweak my colors basically I always mix my colors beforehand at least most of them but I also always go back and tweak them somewhat they always need a little bit of change. And that's just the reflection of the cookie in the bottom of the... Okay, so then I wipe off the cookie because I don't like it. <laughs> I think, okay, I don't like the way the, the waffly, the shadows and the waffle part are looking. So I'm just, I decided to just paint it as a solid cookie, as if there's no waffling going on. because I didn't want to take the time basically. I could have I could have done it, but my goal was to paint it in one sitting and I just moved on. So I finished the cookie and moved on to the coffee. So again, always painting dark to light, dark to light, filling in, getting lighter and lighter. See on my my rows of colors, I'm past halfway to the darker colors, I mean to the lighter colors from the darker colors. This was actually really fun to paint. I think because I was determined to paint it in one sitting, I didn't overthink things and I kept kept it simple. I didn't blend too much. I laid in my color. I tried to lay in my colors boldly, even though some of them aren't quite right. It, if you're mostly right, at least my experience, um, and you don't blend too much, I, I don't think anyone's ever going to, or my, definitely my friend's not going to say, oh, you know, that line, it just doesn't look right. <laughs> She's not going to say that. So this is a transition color from the dark foam to the whitish color foam. It's a transition. It's a it's a middle middle color. And I'm still painting with a pretty pretty large brush on purpose just because it it's not as an exact line. It makes a more rough line and it it blends a little bit better just naturally as you paint. I do change my brush in a little in just a little bit though because I want more a more defined line. So getting to those last four light colors then a lower section of the of the foam. And by the way, this was a very good coffee. I have to say I highly recommend their cappuccinos. Still moving on to the lighter colors. And these transition colors are so, so important for it to, for it, you know, for it to look right and to make sense to your mind. Finally, to the really light, really light colors and the really light foam. And down here, I'm still using my bigger brush because I'm not that worried about getting a little bit outside of the lines and it does help sort of blend it in naturally. 
finishing with the lower section. And it looks like I tweaked some of the colors. And this is where I'm like, you know what, this brush, it just feels too big. So now I'm coming back with the smaller brush. And it was a lot easier for these smaller, smaller sections of the coffee foam. And as you can see, it's not painted exactly, the shapes are not exactly like the reference photo, but I was okay with that. It's still, you can still tell it's, you know, coffee. It's a cup of cappuccino. So now I'm coming in with the little, those are just bubbles. And basically, it's a, it's, a it's a dark color on the bottom with a highlight on the top. So I first just did some spots of dark color and now I'm coming back with the light color on top and they look like little ellipses sort of. They were not perfect but I just was okay with how I painted them. Let's see now I'm filling my brush. Okay so I'm starting on the mug. Here the shadows first. So the mug and the and the saucer, the coffee cup and the saucer. Always start with the dark, the darks first, and the shadow of the cookie. Filling in the darks, moving up my colors. And you know, my shape, my shape that I painted of the handle, again, is not perfect, but for me, it was good enough. It, you know, would suffice. It was quite difficult getting the uh, saucer and just the outline, you know, because it is a smooth, circular shape. Getting that to look like I wanted it, wanted it to, and you can't just sit there and do it over and over because then you'll just blend, blend, blend. So I tried to be really careful when I was painting that. Now I'm tweaking this color a little bit. I'm adding, looks like I'm adding a little bit of red. Yeah, there we go. Still on the coffee, the handle a little bit. This was really fun to paint. Um, my last painting was rather large and it took a long, long time. I'm so glad I did this small painting, one item, because it didn't, uh, it just didn't take, you know, it was, I did it in one sitting and I rather enjoyed it. Maybe it's because I was doing it for someone, I enjoyed it more. Filling in more of the shadows on the saucer now, making sure, I'm, I really didn't blend much at all. I'm making sure, so those colors there, the gray and the darkish brown, you know, I could have gone in and blended those more, but I just left them really rough. I wanted to. I wanted to look, I wanted it to look very painterly. But, you know, you could go in and blend those more if you wanted to. So here's another place that I didn't check like I should have. See how my, the dark shadow on my mug is smaller than the one in the reference photo. I do believe I go and fix that eventually, but it's a very common mistake, at least a mistake that I make. I see a section and I think, oh, I, I'll paint it to here. Well, actually, it, it the dark part goes is larger in in reality than what I painted it. And it probably would have been fine if I'd left it, but I think Mark point, pointed it out to me. Either I noticed it or he did. I can't remember. I think I noticed it, but I was like, eh, do I have to change it? And then he said, yeah, you should change it. So I did. And now just filled, filling in the lighter colors, step by step, step by step by step. 
trying not to blend, trying to paint boldly. Now another issue that I had was um, the rim on my coffee mug is way too thin, but it was it was easy to fix. I went in and just you know push that edge. You'll see at the end I push it to make it larger, and I knew it would be pretty easy because it's a dark color that I'm painting and. It's easy if it's too dark, it's easy to fix. At least in my experience. It's easy to paint a lighter color over a darker color and fix it. So filling in the bottom of the saucer, almost finished with this section. Almost to the lightest. There we go. Pretty much to the highlight. And the spoon, you know, I could have gotten really exact about it but I knew it did not matter whatsoever I knew that I needed the basic colors in the spoon but otherwise it really didn't matter and I needed a more bluish color in the spoon it has just some random colors it, it was fun it was fun to paint because I knew that I couldn't mess it up if I got the basic values correct and the basic shapes correct and obviously the basic colors correct and some just orange random orange color no one's gonna know oh that's a reflection of a door they you know a glass door and it just doesn't matter almost done with the spoon reflection now going back to the to the highlight color on the the coffee mug and right below the spoon it is it is a painting that was full of smooth lines that can be a, a challenge for people um, I did okay it's not perfect but I, I was okay with it if, if you're into hyper realism that's when you have to be really picky but since I painted the entire painting pretty rough I thought my lines don't have to be perfect perfectly smooth perfectly uh, circular so jumping back over here to the highlight on the handle and I'm starting to focus on the the uh, lip the rim of the coffee cup so I'm starting with the darker color sort of grayish color trying to make it basically uh, you know fatter because mine was too thin I remember being really nervous to paint that but I got it all the way around and then coming back with the with the lighter colors coming back with some of the highlights and these are just random shapes random shaped highlights and just colors that if you don't see the room it really doesn't make sense but because the, a lot of the reflections on the coffee cup are leaning towards reddish then these pink reflections make sense and then coming back with some of the really light highlights and sorry my head got in the way <laughs> and you know you can see that my my lines are not perfect but I was I was okay with them I was okay I wanted to leave it rough these highlights, just putting them in, not blending, knowing that they needed to be there, but so making that, that highlight more blue. So they need to be there, but they don't have to be um, the exact shape or 
even the exact size, just basically in the right spot. And I'm trying to make the rim even, even a little bit thicker. I thought I didn't make it thick enough even. So just putting some of these little spots of reflection and, and it's hard to notice, but actually some of them are sort of pinkish. Pinkish and then orangish. Finding some in-between colors. And just finishing with the saucer up top. I hope my friend really likes this painting. I really, I hope she will. I think she will. I enjoy painting for other people. So, a lot of times when I'm painting, I feel like I'm painting problems that I have to go back and fix, which is fine. It actually helps me just to have it all filled in. And then I go back and, like this, I do these delicate lines that I come back in and paint. And if you paint, like I've said before, and I know Mark says it to me a lot, if you paint a section too dark, it's so much easier to go back and fix it. So I usually err on the side of it's too dark. And then like here, I come back in and paint the highlight on top of the darker color. And here, I'll also I'm painting the highlight. It's the very last thing that I do is paint the highlight, the highlights in. And just finishing up with the saucer here. And I'm done. Wow, Mom, that's... Excellent.